and back and forth and back and forth. And in this video, we're going to do some Tunisian and we're going to do Tunisian purl stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, and we're going to go back and forth. And without further ado, you're going to go to my studio and I'm going to stop before I pass out. <laughs> Let's head on over to the studio. Let me show you this fun stuff with Tunisian today. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern, please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do this rib stitch dishcloth using the Tunisian technique. The Tunisian Afghan hook is a five millimeter size H and this is approximately 10 inches long that you see. That's all you need. What you'll uh, also need is Lily Sugar and Cream. This is how much yarn is left over. I started with a full ball. I could have gone bigger if I want to. I'm gonna give you the multiples to change the size of the width and also you can go longer if you wanted to. I wanted to save some yarn uh, in the end so I can run a tutorial on this. So it's a nice easy one row repeat once we get moving on it. The back side looks like this. Isn't that awesome? And the color that you see here is called Soft Violet and that is Lily Sugar and Cream as I mentioned. So remember for any kitchen project uh, products you wanna use, it's 100% cotton because it will get wet. Um, these also, if you probably double stranded, you could probably use these as a hot pad as well and it's something that you can use. So let's get started. A really a great commuter project uh, to do and um, it goes much faster than you may believe. So let's begin and let's talk about our multiples next. The multiple on this particular sample that you see is multiples of four, just four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And when you have that particular multiple, you'll have the balance happen on both sides of the of the dishcloth, just like you see, and the nice ribbing. So if you wanna change the size, as long as it's a multiple of four, you're good. Let's begin. Keeping a longer tail so that you can use that as a tapestry needle to uh, hide that in later. And you're going to want to start with your slip knot. If you're new to Tunisian, I'll try to go nice and slow. So this one never counts as one on the here on the hook here. And what we need to do is a multiple four. So I'm not gonna do a whole a dishcloth, I'm just gonna show you a sample. So if you can either chain 32, that's what that particular uh, sample is, or you can do a multiple of four. So you just go one, I'm chaining two, three, and four. Is it wide enough, yes or no? If not, keep on going. So obviously it's a dishcloth so it's not. So one, two, three, and four, and then one, two, three, and four. So this here is a multiple of four, so this means that it will stay in balance so I can show you what to do next. So do whatever you want and meet me back here and we'll start row number one. So if you're new to Tunisian, I'm going to assume that most of you are, but if not, just fast forward me. So what you wanna do is that you wanna go in the back, uh, they call it the back bar, I call it the back hump of the chain. So second chain from the hook, so one and two, and turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and you want to just insert your afghan hook there. So you wanna yarn over and pull through that chain, okay, and then you're just gonna keep it on there. And do you see the throat of your Tunisian uh, hook right here? You wanna move it beyond the throat so it gets the right diameter of there. Usually the back hump of the chains really upsets people because they're not used to it. So this is something you'll have to get used to. So then you'll move to the next chain. Going in, yarn over, pull through, and slide it beyond the throat and go to the shaft. The shaft is dictating the amount of spacing that each stitch needs. So if you don't move it down the shaft, you're not gonna get the right size stitching and it will be very inconsistent. So I'm just moving down and I'm collecting all the stitches. So if I started here with how many chains, so if it was 32 on the sample, there should be a total of 32 loops. So whatever you decided to do for your multiple that you started with, you'll end up with the exact same amount of loops uh, on the hook. So if you had 24, because that's a multiple four, you should see 24 loops by the time you get all the way across. So continue across, this is called a forward pass because we're moving forward with our hook. And as we go along, the hook is being 
pushed further into the project. So we're moving forward and you're gonna come right to the very end. So I wanna make sure because I did a multiple of four that I'm still four. So I'll say this is four, this is four and that's four. So I have multiples of four. So continue all the way along. Put me on pause if you're not ready and we'll do the return paths and I'll explain how that's done. The return paths in Tunisian, the return pass is when the row grows. Usually in crochet what happens is that we chain one and then we start the instruction to go across. In Tunisian it's on the return pass that this is called because the boat. So just say the boat is moving forward so this is the forward pass and when the boat goes backwards then that's the return pass. So when you're going out to sea it's the forward and when you're going back to dock it is the return. Okay, just think of it like a cruise ship. So when we have to build it out to go home back to the dock the very first loop is what we need to concentrate on and we're gonna yarn over and only pull through the one loop. That's considered a chain one to start a next row and this is in the return pass so we do that. Okay, you ready for more? The rest of this is all beautiful and simple. You're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops at a time very much like double crochet. So you pull through two loops and then yarn over and pull through two loops and two and you do that all the way until you get back to the dock which is the very last loop. So you'll end up with one loop left on your Tunisian hook or your Afghan hook I should be calling it and you're going all the way across until the very end. Put me on pause if you need to wait and you're going to and I'm gonna explain something while you're on, while you're watching. So just put me on pause if you need to. In the return pass you create what looks like a picket fence. Okay and you can see the holes that are through there. It's not until you go back and you put the, the boat out to sea in the, in the forward pass that this all fills in. So right now we can see our neighbors through the fence but in the forward pass when we take the boat out to sea we're actually going to close it off so we can no longer see our neighbor. So we're gonna make the privacy fence even more private. In Tunisian we never worry about the first vertical strand here. We start with the second and that's where we start. So just ignore this. We don't chain one to begin because we chained one when we did the return. So that's already been handled and what you're going to notice is that this top piece here once we do this next piece it's going to fall down and block the neighbor from looking at you. So basically you can open your curtains again. So we're going to start off immediately into the very first two. So the, see this one? Ignore it. It's an edge. So these first two is what you're going to do and we're gonna start off with Tunisian purl stitch. To do the purl stitch I need you to move the hook and just go behind the strand and bring that strand forward with you. And see these verticals that you go? You have to just get your hook behind the first vertical. You see that? Then using your thumb this yarn that we brought forward you're going to pinch it and you're going to yarn over and pull through and you're bringing the yarn through this the vertical backwards. That's the Tunisian purl stitch. So it's coming down looping around and going back through. Takes a bit of practice. The trick to this stitch honestly is just to make sure when you do a purl stitch you come in from the behind of, of this strand so it brings it in front so it's ready for you. If you leave it in behind it will not be ready for you to do that. So you have to sneak in behind and going into the next vertical pinch, yarn over and pull. It takes a bit of practice so if you're rough right out, off the bat it's normal. So those were Tunisian purl stitch. So we have two of those in a row. The next two verticals are going to be the knit stitch. I love the knit stitch. It's my favorite stitch. So using in Tunisian simple stitch we sneak in behind the vertical strand and stay to the front. In Tunisian knit stitch we go through there but we continue to the back side and go all the way through the project. Okay. So you basically you see how their legs of the stitch. You're sneaking between the legs of that stitch. So you're going through and to the back. Yarn over, pull through and, and leave it onto the hook. 
And do you see the difference of the way the stitch looks? And it will be really noticeable after the third row. So you're going to then go to the next one. It's a Tunisian knit. So it's two purls, two knit, two purl, two knit, two purls. That's how it works all the way across. So this is the second knit stitch. So we're gonna go through, split the legs, go all the way to the back, pull forward and that's it. So the next two are a uh, purl stitch. So make sure you sneak in behind so that yarn strand is in front, pinch and pull. Behind, sneak in, pinch and pull. The next two are knit stitch. So you look at it and you say okay I'm going in but I'm going to stay right through the whole project and pull through. The knit stitch is a really fast one. So just going in, split the legs, go right to the back and pull through. And the way that I have you doing the multiple, the final two before the edge is the Tunisian purl stitch. So you gotta sneak in, pinch and pull, sneak from behind, in, pinch and pull. Here is the most critical thing that you will ever learn today, the end. When you go into the end, there's no vertical strand. Remember how we chained one when we started? You're going into that. So what you want to do is that when you sneak in, let me just hide this. When you sneak in, do you see how there's two strands? You wanna sneak underneath the two strands. That's that chain one. And you yarn over and pull through. So the very last stitch is not a Tunisian knit. It's not a purl. It's just working with the chain work itself and it will create the most perfect edge you ever saw. And now let's take our boat back to dock. So to do that we're gonna yarn over and pull through just one loop because we have to chain one because it's a builder and then the rest of it is your sunny holiday of yarning over pulling it through twos all the way back to the dock. And you're going to notice that there's a bit of texture but it's not really that noticeable yet and it will become to light really soon in the next row and especially in row number three you'll start seeing your work coming together. Do you notice how the work is not curling up like technically would in Tunisian? It's because you're alternating stitches. So if that really bugs you on things that curl you just change your stitch work. So let's begin the next row. So we begin the next row just how you saw it. So once you can see the stitches below it becomes really a lot easier. Right now maybe not so much but remember that the first two going out you don't chain one you just start is a purl stitch. You get to hold more product into your hands which is easier and so the first two are your purl stitching. The next two, see how they look different than this? This is your knit stitch. And now you'll see it even more clearly. Split the legs, go to the back, pull through. Split the legs of the stitch, pull through. And then the next two are a purl stitch. So sneak that yarn in front, pinch and pull. So sneak through, pinch and pull. The next two are a knit stitch. This is as complicated as this project gets. So you just keep alternating between every two stitches it changes to the next type of stitch. And then remember the end. So I'll hide these for a second. So when you go into the end you wanna flip it forward and you're putting the two, what appears to be two loops, that's a chain. So your yarn over pull through that and that will keep your edging perfect. If you only go into one strand you'll end up with a hole. So let's return the boat back. So you're gonna yarn over pull through one loop. That's your chain one to build and then yarning over and you're gonna pull through two all the way back. So let's talk about your project now because all you just need to do is keep repeating these rows over and over until you're satisfied and I'll be showing you how to bind off or cast off at the end of this in a few moments from now. But let's review.
So you can go as big as you need to go and I don't like to make my dish cloths so big that they're just sopping with water. So I'd like them to be manageable. I find some of the dish cloths that you can buy are just so huge that they just take forever to dry. So that's why I wanna give you the multiples so that you can do that. At the end we're going to be binding off and the way that I'm gonna bind off here is that I'm gonna show you to keep the maintain, sorry to maintain the stitch work right into the edge. So when you bind off usually in Tunisian you can look it up and you'll see it way and then you'll do it and then it looks like hell. So what I want to show you is that when you bind off with this particular stitch you wanna match your stitch work exactly so that your edging looks like it's seamless because it does on the other side as well. So if you do it in a traditional uh, Tunisian simple stitch way then it's gonna look like hell. <laughs> Let's begin. The mistake people think about is that when you're back to the one they think that's where you're gonna end but in actual fact it's on the opposite side here because if you look you still have those you can see your neighbor. So it's going to be the bind off process that's gonna close off the the neighbors so that you can open your curtains again. So you wanna maintain the stitch work as you see. So you, when you look up Tunisian uh, cast off you will see a lot of it is just going into the vertical like you have been but this is a Tunisian simple stitch and you just bind off. So I'll slow down once I'm ready. I wanna just demonstrate for you what happens when you assume that every tutorial is going to work. This is the Tunisian simple stitch bind off and you're going to notice immediately as I just stop for a second See how it does not look the same as your stitch work? It looks like hell. So what I want you to do is that I want you to get the frame set in your mind that whatever stitch that you decided to do in underneath of it depending if it's this project or another you have to maintain that to be able to do the bind off. So we knew that the first two here are Tunisian pearl stitch. So we're gonna pre we are going to do them as a Tunisian pearl stitch. So you're just gonna sneak in behind going into the vertical pinch and pull but because it's a bind off we wanna pull this through that loop to finish it. And what you're doing is that you're closing down the fence so that your neighbor can't see. So the next one also is a Tunisian pearl stitch. And you pull through and through. Now the next ones are Tunisian knit stitch. So you're going through, split the legs, you pull through and you pull through. And this allows the stitch work to go right to the very end. So through and through instead of having a bind off edge that looks like sin. I have done that where I've done a whole dishcloth and I looked up on how to fasten off and then I did it in what I thought was okay. But because I hadn't been using the same stitch work it was so out of place I was really upset with myself. And I had no idea if it was me but then I came to realize through a research that when you do the bind off you wanna do that in the way that the stitch work has already been, been going. Okay so you're just matching the stitch work right to the very end. And you go right into that side chain. And then that's where technically you're finished. So when you go to finish let me show you that. So once you're finished you just take the yarn and you just pull it through. So I've already cut it you saw me do it. And I'm gonna take it and turn the project over. So in the back it looks completely different than the front side. So it will be a lot more organized. And throwing it through a tapestry needle this is a usable thing. You could use it as a table runner or a table something. But most likely you will use it. So you're just gonna take it to the back of the project and it's better if you can split plies. Some people try to wiggle the needle through the strands, between the strands but it will fall out. But if you're going through the plies of the actual fibers itself it's almost impossible. So even on the return pass if you go and break through the plies that just went over that way it's gonna be virtually impossible to get out. So if you make a mistake and then you do this and you need to pull it out good luck Chuck. <laughs> So you just wanna go back and forth a total of three times and this is how you can have your, your dish cloth. And it's really quite nice and you, when you pull the original sample out um, it's a nice dense project because I went with the four and a half millimeter sorry a five millimeter size H a Tunisian hook. It's nice and tight and this is something that I can use for the kitchen. So this here is a fun little project just in case you're interested and I'm your host Mikey from the Crochet Crowd on, my, on behalf of my friends at Yarnspirations.com.